Velma for Life in LA, Season 2, Episode 4. GFA Global Filipino Welcome, 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 right here on the GFN channel, your host, Vilma. <laughs> no, Live in LA is not my last name, just kidding, it's Dave Ramos, but everybody just calls me Vilma. Okay, so, tonight's show, we have Diana Dre and also Ray Ruiz. So, that and much, much more right here on the show, it's exciting, it's cool, and most of all, it's spending time with you okay so we get to do our hellos right now to anita who has driven over to sacramento hi anita miss you already and hi to agnes in toronto who's always there and uh, saying hi on facebook thank you so much to nora in australia she's always there as well you guys are just the best and Luz in the philippines he frequently says hi to me as well. Love you guys. And to Rosalie, my sweetest friend and executive producer in the Philippines, we chat a lot. Plus, Connie from the Bay Area, you are pretty awesome. Love you too. And happy birthday to Marianne. She's celebrating somewhere. She flew over to Hawaii. Have fun over there, okay? And to Mirabella's my sweetest, awesome friend, eternal friend. Love you too. And uh, also to Jeff in Texas, our hearts go out to you, okay? Uh, hang in there. We love you. We always think of you. And we'll have you uh, on the show again, okay? We've got your music and I love collaborating with you. So yeah. And Marie over there at the Rancho Cucamonga area. Hi to you, plus Ollie in Hong Kong. Hi! And all of my friends out there. And I'm going to tell you that we actually have reached 16.7 thousand viewers all over the world. So I'm pretty excited because we did start from like in the 300s. So I'm pretty happy. So check out my song. I get to sing it for you. The key to my life is me. Like a merry-go-round 
Things go up, they go down silently. And I go fly so high across the distant sky, across the earth, the universe. Feature film? Oh yeah, I am uh, writing my first feature film. Uh, you know, it's a true story that happened last year. Uh, so we're writing. I, I met the director at a film that we did in 2019, and I told her about my story, and she was like, "Oh, that's really cool. We should write that." And we started writing it. So we're currently in the process of writing it. And uh, we'll see where it goes. But yeah, that's you know, uh, you know about my experiences last the, in 2019. So we're writing a, a whole movie about that because the movie just wrote itself. So we have to we have to tell the story. <laughs> Absolutely right. How yeah, interesting, exciting, and it's nice because it's gonna come to life. Yeah, and also it gives me something to do. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Yeah. So no working title yet. Uh, I, yeah, we have not come up with a working title yet, but it's yeah. We'll, the title is gonna come, you know, itself. Yeah. We will not force it. It is just gonna come when it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Diana Dre. That was an amazing interview, and I'm looking forward to all those stunts you're going to be creating and doing and loving, and of course, all your rigorous workouts. So do share, okay? Ray Ruiz, the actor, producer, with so much passion, heart, and a whole lot of awesome. Um, like I said, I take the very blue collar approach to the projects, you know, I figure, you know, opportunity is only as good as what you do with it. Right. And I never want to be that person that they had to hold up the production and things like that. So I really believe in over preparing, studying your lines, you know, uh, you know, repetition doesn't, repetition doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. And so uh, I'll do a couple of different ways. A lot of times I'm alone, so I'll read my opposite sides over a recorder and leave gaps in the lines for me to deliver my lines once I feel comfortable enough to act them out. And I'll practice that over and over. I'll practice over recording myself and the subtle nuances of my facial expressions and my body movements. And that was one of the good things that I took from being a fighter into acting was it's easy for me to check my ego at the door and be very conscious of all my body movements. So, you know, cause every little movement, we pick it apart when we fight. And so I'm really conscious of that and able to still act. And when the director gives me direction, I don't take it personal at all. I just sit and shut up, give them what they want and try my best to let them bring the best performance out of me. Yeah. I like the fact that you said, you know, you're when you're preparing for your role, you're speaking lines, um, how how you rehearse it, because there is such a thing as muscle memory, because it's the same thing mm -hmm. singing. You repeat it over and over and over again, and um, even like playing the piano. So it, once you do that, I think you repeat it 21 times or so, it becomes a muscle memory. 21. Oh yeah, I believe it. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, yeah. I remember that at least 21 times. At least 21 times before it becomes muscle memory. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> cool. I think I wanted to ask you, what did it feel like when you first um, stepped onto a set? Your very first roll you step onto a set tell us your describe your feeling um a little bit it was like uh, wonderment mm -hmm. and excitement and it was like being a kid and being amazed you know it was it was really something magical uh, i'm not gonna lie and I, I was i was instantly in love with it and um just seeing it and going, this is this is what I see and, and seeing it from the other side and watching it all. You know, the hardest part was for me not smiling like a big geek the whole time. I was so happy. And it wasn't because I wanted to be famous or get screen time. I was just, I was so happy. Even if I didn't get any screen time, I was just happy to be there. And I was trying to soak up the whole moment, just be in the moment. 
And then uh, I was trying to sneak a little bit of pictures so I could show people, like my family, because everyone's like, hey, take a couple behind the scenes pictures. But I was so nervous to get in trouble. You know, I didn't. I was like trying to sneak here and there and I couldn't get good pictures, but it was really, it was really something great, special. And, uh, you know, I heard all these people talking about their different roles and I was just kind of this guy that never did anything. And I drove down and here I am and enjoy the moment. Uh, look around and listen and try to learn so I don't make a complete fool of myself on camera. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I I can feel the excitement uh, in you uh, during that time. I mean, I love, I mean, even for me, say, for example, when I go to a concert or I mean, I, I look at a production, I'm so excited. Um, do you know that when I actually do go to a concert, when we used to still be able to go to a live concert, I don't just watch the singing. I watch the director. I watch the producer, the lighting guy, the sound guy, what song, how it transitions, the lighting, the smoke, the entire production. That's what I watch. And exactly like you, and I'm, I'm so amazed, and I know if they're going to have an encore or not. You know, because I know mm -hmm. how they're moving the uh, the channel, the the sound system, and yeah, the entire panel. I know what they're doing because <laughs> I've been around it. But I can feel your yeah, it's really cool. Yes. Yeah, and then uh, after being on the set a few times and things like that, when you watch a movie, you can say, "Hey, I know how they frame that shot," or "I know why they shot like that now," or. You know, you can kind of picture how it is and it looks so grandiose, so magical on film. And sometimes it's something so simple, just maybe one little camera in a little room, but they can create magic with this. You know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun what they do. Was there a particular scene where you like, like got it in an instant and then a particular scene where... You had to do it so many times. You, you know, I've been pretty fortunate. I haven't had to do too many takes. There was a couple, like, you know, you get that tickle and you got a cough. Uh, but um, one scene, it was pretty funny because uh, it was, you know, one of my biggest films at the time that I've done. You know, it had fires, explosions, and the fire engines. It's a movie called Fire on the Ridge. Yeah. And I almost didn't do the film because it was during the pandemic and it was really difficult with the COVID and everything to do. But I go, I'm going to do it. There's an opportunity. Don't miss it. I'm so glad I didn't miss it because it, it grew into something really special. And uh, I was playing a captain, a fire captain on the scene. And uh, I'm usually not a big yeller and things like that. And then the director, she wanted me to yell, uh, Nancy Hamilton, a tough Australian lady, she's great. So she wanted me to give a lot of emotion oh, at my co-actor. Yeah. And I wasn't giving her the emotion that she wanted. And it was everybody, I mean, there's a, probably like 7,500 people there all waiting for me to deliver my lines correctly. We're, we're chasing the, the production costs, everything. Yeah, so every, I'm like holding up the production. If I, and we did like third take and she finally told me, she goes, Ray, if you do not give me the emotion I want, I'm gonna kick you right in your butt. <laughs> And uh, she was serious, and I thought about it. So I was like, "Okay, lady, you want me to let loose? I'm gonna let loose." But it was really fun after that, and uh, I realized what she wanted. You know, she wanted me to let loose and really get that passion in there. Right. And uh, to this day, some of the lines I delivered in that scene, they still tease me about it, <laughs> like you know, my family and friends. Wow. So you you mentioned that it was during COVID. How did you? Mm -hmm. prepare like did you have to quarantine for two weeks were you guys in a bubble can you uh, let us know because we don't know well uh every production has a, a well now there's, there's different standards so the standards were evolving so they hadn't really got down to where they were shutting everything down yet and was still trying to figure out how to do things gotcha. at that time but one of the things were, of course, the health screeners, nurses everywhere, screening everyone, questionnaires, going down to get tested, and then doing all the safety protocols when you're in the set, you know, wearing your mask in between scenes and things like that, and sanitizing everything. Uh, now, moving forward, uh, a lot of the SAG productions, they require COVID testing three days before you perform. And some may want to quarantine you. And, and you know, there's a lot of things that are involved now that makes it really hard for the productions. 
Right. And you'll see like the casting call sometimes dry up completely. There's nothing. And then as soon as they open the door, everyone's scrambling to get their shot ins and cast their actors. Yeah, because it's like you said, it's three days, right? So that you have to have that three days before you can go in the door. Yep. And then uh, if you have to travel, some of them want you to test at their people. So uh, I found a place that would give me rapid tests on the spot and things like that that helped me. So I'm really big. I'm, I'm getting tested like every other week anyways, you yeah. know, just to know I'm safe, you know. Yeah. But. It, it definitely was a, a, a new reality for filmmaking and just in general for everybody. passionate actor filled with so much heart and a whole lot of awesome on Vilma Live in LA. And we'll have more from Ray Ruiz next week. Vilma Live in LA has reached 16.7 thousand viewers worldwide. That is pretty cool, pretty awesome, and thank you everybody because we're going to keep reaching for more and go up and up and up. And this song is so special to me. I believe in you. I believe in me. Of course, um, I wrote the song. My brother-in-law wrote well. He did all the instrumentation. My three sisters, yes, Tess, Jeanette, and Narissa, all helped in the background vocals. Plus my niece and nephew, um, Sienna and Zach, also did some background vocals. So it is all about family. So I believe in you. I believe in me. I believe that the sun will always shine. I believe in the world and this will run and ride. That a song can touch your heart and mind.
for spending time with me right here on Velma Live in LA. We'll have more for you next week. In the meantime, you guys, stay safe, be kind, and know that I believe in you. I believe in me.